The United States is seeing one of the largest movements in its history. Protests continue in hundreds of cities across the United States against racism and demanding justice for its victims. The protests have been going on for more than a month after the killing of George Floyd on May 25th. An estimated 15 to 26 million people in the U.S. have participated in Black Lives Matter demonstrations as of mid-June. In places such as New York City and Seattle, protests are taking place every day. The memory and demands for justice for George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, and Ahmed Arbery remain central to this wave. At the same time, the rallying cry of Black Lives Matter has translated to concrete demands to local, state, and federal officials. Some of the most significant demands have been end to impunity for officers involved in violence and the killing of Black, Latino, Native, and working class people. An end to police brutality against protesters. Defunding the police and all repressive apparatuses. Increased investment in services such as public education, housing, and healthcare. July 4th, Independence Day, was marked by protests organized across the country the freedom to be hungry, you got the freedom not to have a job, that's a hell of a amount of freedom that you got in America. You got a freedom to die on the street, but you don't have the freedom to live. So when we say freedom for who, it's not freedom for the oppressed people, it's not freedom for the working classes, it's freedom for the rich, it's freedom for the elites, it's the freedom of the imagination to make you think you got something when you don't have anything at all. It's no doubt that the whole world has woken up. Some people again, some people already knew they never went to sleep, but regardless if you were asleep, wake or whatever, now you know about this war on black America. Now we could do one or two things. There's a lot of people, and many people have mentioned they want to paint streets, they want to pass some nonsensical law that doesn't do anything about that. We could go that way and it could be over tomorrow. And they can have everything they want. The elites, the rich, the police, they have everything they want as soon as they get us out of the street. Or we can make one simple vow, that we will stay in the streets, that we will make this country ungovernable, that if necessary, we will turn it upside down, because George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Ahmed Aubrey, everyone who's ever been killed unjustly by this brutal system deserves it, and it's in our hands to make justice reality for them, to take this system by the neck, to drag it down, to burn it if we have to, just like they took down the slave plantations in the Civil War. That was a destruction, they say destruction of property, that was a trillion dollar destruction of property, and it was righteous. Property isn't more important than people. Property isn't more important than humanity. A broken window can be replaced, a life cannot be replaced. It's in our hands. It's in our hands. We have to rise up and continue to fight. In Seattle, the Black Femme March organized on July 4th had a tragic end when a driver drove their car into the crowd. 24-year-old Summer Taylor was killed, and another protester, Diaz Love, was gravely injured. The violent police response to protests since May 25th has cost several lives already and left many with serious injuries, including loss of vision. In Aurora, Colorado, sustained mobilizations have been held to demand justice for Elijah McClain. He was murdered by the police on August 24th, 2019. Police officers had stopped him for looking suspicious. They proceeded to pin him down, put him in a chokehold, and inject him with a large dose of ketamine. McLean suffered a heart attack and died in the hospital days later. To this day, his family has been denied any form of restitution from the city because McLean had been classified as a suspect. On July 3rd, the Party for Socialism and Liberation and the Frontline Party for Revolutionary Action organized an action to demand justice for McLean. They marched from the site where McLean was murdered to outside the Aurora police office. They began a peaceful occupation, demanding that the officers involved in his death be fired. The police department continues to refuse to meet the people's demands. Yeah, da, da, que vamos a triunfar.